Here we are with two great films tonight, Black Tuesday and La Trale, The Whole. Really, really fabulous films, both of them with the uh, I need to get out of jail as fast as possible themes. The first one, Black Tuesday, this film has really kind of disappeared and vanished in the cracks. It was recently put out about a month ago on Blu-ray. Uh, and we showed a print of this like, I don't know, 22 years ago, 21 years ago when we were still showing uh, 16 millimeter prints here. And now there is a viable print and you will see a 35 millimeter print of this film tonight. And this is, this is to my money, uh, uh, I remember Ann Savage told me something when we were talking about B films a long time ago, and she said, remember, Alan, B doesn't mean bad, and it certainly doesn't in this case because Edward G. Robinson absolutely rules this film, I'm telling you. It's, it's a remarkable performance, and Edward G. Robinson was associated with so many great performances. Uh, I don't think he ever gave a bad one, ever. It's fascinating for me to find out that as professional and classy uh, on the screen, he was just the same off the screen, and I feel real fortunate to have Edward G.'s granddaughter, Francesca, here tonight to tell us about her grandfather. So Francesca, could you please join us, and please give Francesca Robinson a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and I should note, she, she didn't want me to say anything, but it is Francesca's birthday tonight, so wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> I'm a rat, sorry. Thank you, I'm, I'm 17 today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be 18 next right. week. <laughs> so, uh, your grandfather, I think it's fair to point out right away that this was somebody that wasn't just a grandfather distant. You knew him, you were, packed, you were raised by him to a certain extent. What was, what was Edward G. really like? Well, he was an incredible man, um, a genius. He hmm. uh, was a wonderful grandfather. And he really was like my father. Not that my father wasn't a good man. Right. But he wasn't always reliable. Mm -hmm having a drinking problem. So Grandpa was really the one who uh, took over, mm -hmm. and my grandmother, Gladys. Mm -hmm. We went to the father and daughter dances, high school PTA meetings. He was always there. I traveled to Europe with him when he did a film called Operation San Pieta, mm -hmm. about stealing the right. Pieta out of the Vatican, and spent a whole summer with him in Italy. Mm -hmm. and Rome, and it was wonderful. He was always checking that report card. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you, isn't there a story where you had to bring a report card and somebody else signed it? Yes, yes. Uh, Grandpa did a movie called The Prize with Paul Newman, and Diane Baker's here And tonight. Diane Baker is here with here, us tonight. played his niece, and Elkie Summer, and a, and a great cast of people. Mm -hmm. It was a Friday, and it was... Uh, after school, and I had to bring the report card, and you know he wanted mm -hmm. me to be on the set with him in right. the afternoon. He looked at it, he was pleased, and then Paul Newman, and he said, oh, your report card. He said, Eddie, don't sign it. I'm going to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. When I brought it back to school, the, you know, the teacher saw it, but I did get the report card back, thank God, <laughs> at the end of the year. Yeah. But he was very interested in everything that I, that I did, and he cared. And um, he could be quite a taskmaster at times, too. Right. But I realize now, because he was so bright, you know, he spoke seven, eight languages fluently. He was always a student mm -hmm. and um, always reading. And like he'd play word games mm -hmm. with his friends, where with a dictionary. He loved playing gin rummy. He loved for art. Mm -hmm. you know, it was incredible. And he amassed two great colors. Mm -hmm. The first that unfortunately was sold when my grandparents got a divorce. Right. It was considered probably the finest privately Private. owned mm -hmm. impressions, post-impressionist um, collection, and it was up there with the Annenberg collection. Right. Uh, and then uh, he amassed a second collection. It was better than most. It wasn't like the first one, but he was able to get back about 15 paintings mm -hmm. from Strabos Niarchos, the mm -hmm. Greek 
free shipping magnet who bought the collection, the first one. Right. You know, he wanted to make sure that I spoke properly. You know, he would always say, when you, I was younger, I'd say, hey, he said, oh, hey is for horses. <laughs> and then he would say, everybody says water. It's not water, it's not W-D-D-E-R, it's water. Mm -hmm. Or another thing that a lot of people even today, and I'm surprised when I watch newscasts, everybody has a problem with saying for. They mm -hmm. say fur. Mm -hmm. If you notice that on TV, everybody mm -hmm. goes fur. Like Sport. a cat's tail. Right. Fur to and, the end. Yeah, but he did all sorts of special things. He, had a, he had a very um, uh, a rich collection of friends here in Hollywood. Oh, yes. Not, he did. not just actors. In fact, uh, I believe uh, the writer uh, of tonight's film, Sidney Bohm, Sid Bohm, who wrote through the 1950s just about every great from Rogue Cop to The Big Heat to Black Tuesday. And you knew Sid Bohm, is that correct? I was very close to Sid Bohm. Yeah. Very close. Uh, actually, he's somebody I could really talk to mm -hmm. when I was upset with my grandfather and my step-grandmother. <laughs> and after even my grandfather passed away, uh, I was close to Sid. I could talk to him about family problems and so on. And he was a wonderful listener, and he gave great advice. And I Super. loved that man very much and his wife, Ellen. And... Uh, he was a very close friend of Eddie's, and they would play Jen Rummy. Mm -hmm. Eddie loved Jen Rummy, and uh, but Sid was always beating him, and Grandpa always hated it. <laughs> you know, didn't that Sid like to lose. Right, didn't like to lose. Right, you know, Grandpa participated in, um, like I said, the PTA. I went to Marymount High School in Palos Verdes, and nobody knew that I was related to my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And it was the first eight weeks, and they had the parents meeting. One of my best friends, Cheryl. Her parents were there, and Cheryl's mother turns to her husband and says, I swear, that looks like Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> and he said, Madeline, put your glasses on. It is. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I wonder why he's here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then they heard about mm -hmm. Francesca, this Francesca. You mm -hmm. know, he would ask questions. And uh, anyway, Madeline came home and said, did you know Francesca? is related to Edward G. Robinson, and she said, so what? <laughs> you yeah, know? You I mean, we were friends. I mean, right. one, it had nothing to do with anything. Now, this film was made during the period when your grandfather was uh, gray-listed and, and so forth, and, um, uh, but still, even though he had to act in films that had previously been beneath him, he really gave it his all, and I always thought it was truly ironic on who gave him his career back or who put him back where he belonged. Well, that was the arch-conservative <laughs> reactionary uh, Cecil B. DeMille. Yes. Uh, the Ten Commandments. We are grateful to him because he said, I've had you checked out. You're as clean as a hound's tooth. The fact, the fact said, that he was even doing that was right. kind of disgusting. But, right, yeah. you're as clean as a hound's tooth, yeah. and he said, you're not a communist. And so when Grandpa, it sort of broke the blacklist for mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. and from that point on, from Ten Commandments all the way to Soylent Green, right. and there were many films between that period that he worked constantly mm -hmm. yeah. uh, on there. But the B picture period, what was interesting was that or the grays you call the gray listing, I call it still the black listing because sure. he, he uh, was doing the B pictures because of the black listing. Mm -hmm. And then there was no work at all and being right. denied a passport mm -hmm. and all these awful things that were going on. And, and you then had, you know, the, yeah, I think his the biggest right that fi figured that he was and the left, like we're saying, well, this is really not a cause of your own. Yeah. But he was a very, he was a great humanitarian and he gave a great deal of money to a lot of charities and probably some were communist fronts. Could have been. Well, he was, there, I, mean, I think people, people have a tendency to forget right. that the Soviet Union w was on our side well, during exactly. World War II and your grandfather was uh, very much involved with the anti-Nazi League yes, along was, with right. the Warner Brothers and yes. Groucho Marx and a lot of other people. Oh, right, well, because he did yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, Confessions, Confessions of, of a Nazi, Nazi spy. spy, right? And they wanted to take out the word Nazi, and he said, "I will not do this film if you take out the word Nazi." Good for him. But there were a lot of meetings at his home, 
even with Chaplin and people during the whole thing with what was going on in Germany. He worked with the people like Salka Vierto, mm -hmm. Peter Vierto's mother, right. Bertolt Vierto's wife, bringing over Thomas Mann, Bertolt Brecht, mm -hmm. all these people out right. of all out of immigrants. Germany, uh, and um, it was a horrible. I mean, it was a, yeah. Sort what of were, interesting. It's sort of interesting. We're sort of in a yeah kind of situation on, today. On a, on a lighter <laughs> note, what were did he talk a lot about his films, and what were some of his favorite films that he that he admired, where he thought that the film and everything in his right. performance the, was good. The two that he always talked about. I, I know there were others too, but the two specifically was uh, Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet. Yes, he terrific loved that. film. He, he, and the other one was The Cincinnati Kid. Ah, okay. yeah, that, great. <laughs> and, he uh, steals that picture right, totally. Yes. And I, I think, of course, he loved uh, Double Indemnity. Oh, yeah. Which, would, again, he was... Another, uh, another he, picture that yes. he almost walked right. away with. Uh, uh, but The Cincinnati Kid, I know, was his favorite film. His later, later in his life. later's film, yeah. Right, and... Uh, yeah. It was interesting about him doing Soylent Green because he said to me, I'd like you to read the script. Mm -hmm. And I read it. Mm -hmm. And he said, what do you think? And I said, I, I said, I don't know why you're doing this. I said, uh, I said, if the world becomes this way, I would rather commit suicide than live in a world or society like this. Right. And he said, I agree. And he said, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, doing I, I, I'm doing it. But he said... Also, because it was a sort of science fiction right, science that he had fiction. not done. Yeah. And he said, I truly feel there's a very important message here, Francesca. I truly believe this can happen. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's why I'm doing it. And of course, Good he cared me. about mankind. He was a great humanitarian. Right. And... Uh, you know, did so many things for we're going to have we're going to have the son of the director of Soylent Green, Richard Flesher. Mark Flesher is going to be our guest tomorrow night. Oh, that's great. And I, yes. I knew I knew Dick uh, uh, somewhat. I, I talked with him on several occasions and he thought the world of your grandfather yes. and that movie. Yeah. He was proud of the movie and he was proud that he got to direct a film with Edward G. Robinson. In it. Right. He was very proud of that. So well, it was anyway. interesting because he did die couple of months later, people like to say within weeks or days, but it wasn't, and, you know, it was very hard seeing it after watching Well, that last scene in the movie in, in the movie. Is uh, tough. Uh, yeah, but, it's and tough. Heston had always, yeah. uh, he was, got very emotional about it, always, yeah. when he talked about it. Sure, sure. Oh. One thing I, I always enjoyed of seeing a little bit of the personal side of your grandfather are these old episodes of What's My Line that are all over the internet. And right. I think he was a mystery guest on there like six or seven times. And every time he would change his voice, he'd make it like this, right. or he'd do different voices. And every exactly. time they would figure it out, right. usually Arlene Francis, who right. I could tell yes, adored yes, him. Yes, most definitely. You're better known for your picture work. I suppose so. Have you? <laughs> Would you consider yourself a leading man? I mean, do you get the girl in the end? Well, if some people tell me I'm the doctor. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Some people tell me I'm the doctor and appealing. You're seductive and appealing? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you speak English? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the one with the beard. When he has the full beard. Yeah, he had the full beard. And she said, oh, dear, darling, Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no. may be able to disguise yourself with your beard, but the well, timbre I... of your voice comes through everything yeah. you do, dear, oh, lovely I Ed. think I would have had a much easier time fooling you with my beard than listening to me. You know? <laughs> and yeah, as you was... could tell, he was having fun. And oh, yeah, he was most enjoying. definitely, and he was yeah. very, very fond of yeah. her. His legacy continues to grow, and I think you being here is part of that. And... Again, this, this movie you're about to see tonight, Black Tuesday, it was directed by Hugo Freganese, who directed some of you who were here that stuck around last night for Hardly a Criminal. Uh, this is more of Freganese's work, and I think you'll see that there was, there was definitely a connectivity between Freganese and, and um, Eddie Robinson in this film, because he just takes over. And the supporting cast is kind of like the casting call of 1950s television and movies. Warren Stevens, Russell Johnson, Peter Graves, 
Gene Parker, who's excellent. It's a low-budget film, but I think it's terrific, and even more terrific has been having you here well, thank to introduce you. it. And it's so nice to meet you and, right. and asking me. And the last time I was here was in 2000. Eddie was the sixth legend of Hollywood, the stamp, U.S. postal stamp. Right. And the stamp was unveiled here. The theater was full, wonderful celebrities all speaking about him and in the audience, and what a great... I can't think of anything I'd rather put on a letter, uh, an <laughs> angry letter to the DWP than a picture of Edward right, G. Robbins. Right, right, <laughs> right. But that's the last time when we had the, in right, the uh, right. unveiling here. Okay, so, well, we need to you. let these good folks see the movie. Yes. So, Francesca, thank you so oh, much welcome. for being thank here. Thank you, thank you.